Yes everyone, a well-deserved facelift finally for the Peugeot 2008. Now guys, the facelift is very interesting, although when it comes to the bodywork and the design, not much has really changed, but there is some exciting improvement nonetheless everyone, and we're going to take a look at it right now. But before doing so, I want to cover the price tag. This particular Peugeot 2008 costs 36,000 euros. Is it good value for money or not? We're gonna find out in a moment, guys. Let's get on with this review right now. You get those nice looking daytime running lights, guys. They look like claws. If we look closely at this area between the lighting and the grill, you see this little effect right here. This is something really interesting. You get wheels that are styled after the 80s, guys. And then it is also right here we see some changes. Before they used to be vertical, now they are horizontal, guys. They look like lasers. It's great. And then there is no Peugeot badge anymore. You get this Peugeot written in uh, letters. Now guys, I don't know if it's just me, but looking at the Peugeot 2008 from this angle, it had me thinking of the Jeep Avenger. You get a 360 degree parking camera and you get parking sensors at the front and at the rear. Front doors get keyless entry, everyone. Blind spot monitoring, everyone. And you get actual exhausts down there, guys. This particular Peugeot 2008 has the GT trim level to it. So GT directly implies it's supposed to be all sporty, right? Or it's supposed to be something. It has to have some relevance with sportiness. But we look at the exterior and all we see is the crossover SUV stereotype. So proud hard plastic everywhere, guys, including on the side. It's, um, it's, it's very conspicuous. It's hard for me to spot any GT aspect about the exterior, except those proud exhausts and maybe those fancy non-conventional wheels. But then I think the magic is in the interior, guys. Now it is time to check out the interior, guys. The part which I was very much looking forward to because I just glanced at the interior and I already spotted the GT aspect about it, the sportiness of it. So interior is all sporty. In fact, if you were blindfolded and then you had to take off the blindfolds in the interior, you'd likely mistake it for a PSE. Now, as I've mentioned before, when I reviewed the Peugeot 5008 PSE, Peugeot Sport Engineered, Peugeot Sport Engineered is basically a sporty trim level of the Peugeot cars. So it's like how Mercedes has AMG, uh, Fiat has a Barth. You get the point, right? This is the philosophy. Now, sitting in this interior, guys, uh, it's very interesting. A lot has remained unchanged compared to the pre-facelift version. So I think I, maybe the facelift has an effect on the option list. It's very likely because I saw the wheels. They're awesome. And maybe it has effect on the trim level and the seating. Now, I think these seats are only for the GT line. I'm not entirely sure, but whatever they are, they are awesome, guys. But what I can tell is that the infotainment system itself has something interesting going on. It's, it's the exact same theme as the Peugeot Sport Engineered, so black and green. Interesting. Now, the infotainment system is very generous, easy to use. I like it. Uh, it's easy to reach as well. It's uh, right above there, so it's uh, you don't get distracted uh, when uh, using it, uh, especially looking at the road ahead of you. Peugeot has come up with this piano effect system right here, which is uh, quite a unique system, guys. And heated front seats, guys. Now, speaking of seats, you get electric seating adjustments. This is awesome, guys. I like it. Uh, no seating memory, but for... Oh, you get seating massage, by the way, though. This is awesome. Uh, you don't need seating uh, memory though because you, you, it's not aiming for the premium segment. Now, steering adjustment, guys. You get uh, the steering adjustment. You can move up, down, in and out. Really nice. But just another problem I would like to remark, guys, is that I am not a fan of this concept by Peugeot. They have introduced, uh, they have developed an obsession with small steering wheels. I do not like it but I still think it's artistic nonetheless. If you want to see the instrument cluster, make sure the steering wheel is in this position so that your eyes go above the handle of the steering wheel because conventionally, I'd keep it here so that my eyes go in between the handle and the drum of the steering wheel. But because of Peugeot's interesting concept, I'm forced to put it all the way down here and then look at everything like this. Now, it's of selective taste, guys. I personally am not a fan of this, but there are people who just don't mind. So. Who cares? There's something interesting about this entire layout over here because the, the infotainment system tilts towards me, but I'm under the impression that this entire center over here, the air vents and the buttons, they tilt towards the passenger side. 
okay. The idea of simplicity is good, but then there's just always one problem. Because Peugeot has moved everything to the infotainment system, you're going to be forced to look at the screen very often to control the uh, climate controls and everything. So this means it can be a little bit distracting when driving, guys, but it is something you'll get used to eventually. You do still have a presence of physical buttons, which will take you directly to the relevant uh, section you want to go to. So for instance, climate control. Otherwise, I have to say I'm impressed with this door handle, guys. This door handle is quite nice. I like it. I like the leather wrapping on it. And then also the window controls. Now the window controls are rather basic. It's they, They've left it uh, untouched really. It resembles what you see in other Peugeot models and Citroen models as well. Basically Stellantis models at the moment. Anyways, practicality guys. The part that's also very important, practicality. So I just looked up here and I noticed that there's no glasses holder. This is my favorite feature guys. I need glasses holders. Now, where do I put my sunglasses? Although you do get a nice panoramic sunroof. Cup holders, guys, a little problem. French car manufacturers are known to have cup holders that are hit or miss. So when it comes to the two cup holders over here, they're good, but they can just about fit this bottle perfectly because there's not enough space for a bigger bottle or anything. Um, and there's two bottles. Ah, surprisingly, this cup holder is bigger than this one. And then there's a new problem because this armrest can intrude in the way of this cup holder, guys. So if you want to use this one, this cup holder, you have to move this armrest backwards. And then there you go. Cup holder can be used. Speaking of armrest, uh, you get this nice armrest right here. And uh, you get a central console storage. You get a little bit of storage which you can remove. And you can clean it as well if needed. And then you get a central console storage, which is average for its price and segment. In fact, it's very similar to what you see on a B-segment car, which shouldn't be surprising because this is a B-segment crossover SUV. It's related to the Peugeot 208. Now, you get a... I don't think this is a wireless cell from Recharge, guys. Oh, over here is a wireless cell from Recharge, but then you get this area that can be used as a pen holder. Very interesting concept, guys. It's very creative because if you don't use this area down here, you can just open this and use this area instead. I I think it's an innovative feature, but at the same time, it's just something I get used to because I'm used to having it open the other way around, like up instead. But anyways, you get a 12 volt socket over here and additional storage space down here, and this uh, is good. A little problem I would like to remark is that you get two charging ports right above here that are just open and exposed, guys. So it's just as if they were, it's like they were just an afterthought or something. So why not just cover them or why not put them next to the 12 volt socket? And then over here, guys, you get a door bin. Now the door bin can just perfectly fit my water bottle. Now, can it fit a big water bottle or not? I have doubts, guys. Now we have to cover the glove box. I have a good feeling the glove box is going to be big because this is a Peugeot, a PSA Group car. Yes, of course, my suspicions were right. You get a huge glove box in there, guys, and uh, a little storage space over here. This is really interesting. I had no doubt. You get two pallets on the steering wheel, guys. They're easy to use and uh, they're easy to reach from most parts. It's really good. Uh, just one thing you have to watch out for is that the pallets, they hover, guys. So when turning the steering wheel, they, the pallets don't turn with the steering wheel. They just hover. Oh, check this out, guys. Frameless rear view mirrors. Now, we're going to check out the back seat. But before doing so, I just want to point out, guys, this part of the rear door stands out very proudly, guys. So just back away every time you open it because it's rather sharp and it can make contact with your chest. Back seat. Alrighty. So the back seat guys the back seat is very interesting oh headrest there we go so leg room can be limited because of the seating adjustment of the driver's seat and the front passenger but then it's of selective guys i mean it depends knee room on the other hand is good but then just watch out if ever the driver's seat or the front passenger seat gets too close to you your knees will make contact with this hard plastic right here guys just something you have to compromise on. Otherwise, the headrest is rather good. You get this touch of Alcantara on it, which makes it a bit firm. But then on the other hand, not bad, guys. It's pretty average for its price and segment. Now, I have a drink. Where am I supposed to put it? Uh, usually, there. I'm not surprised there's no armrest over here. 
But then you do get this uh, nice uh, net for uh, back seat pockets, guys. It's very flexible, durable. Otherwise, you get side door bins, which are average for its segments. But I'm under the impression that the side door bins are a bit on the shallow side, guys. They're good. They do their job, but they're just a bit shallow. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting much, but then it's really good. One thing I really like is that you get handles at the back right here. And I'm saying this because I know some competitors that did not even offer handles at the back. This is good. Pusher is well prepared, but I don't see any coat hook anywhere. I I'm looking all over. And now when it comes to what's going on over here, there's no air vent or anything, no climate control, but then to be fair, it doesn't really matter. You do get a, a USB point down there and a charging port. That's already generous enough, but then no storage space. Now let's see what the middle seat is like, guys. So getting to the middle seat is a bit tricky, but it should be fine because there's a little ridge down here, but it should be okay. To be fair, the middle seat feels better than the side seats, guys. Although I should try saying that when there are people seated. Now you also get ISOFIX for the seats, but in order to reach them, you have to pull the zip up and then um, the ISOFIX are in there. Now we're gonna check out the boot space. Cool boot door, guys. The boot door is not electric, unfortunately. It's uh, manual, so you have to pull it down by yourself, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is the space in the back. First thing first, I would like to talk about the boot lip. You get a proud plastic boot lip right here, which is durable, guys. In long terms, it may have a little bit of a scratch, but it's at least better than having exposed metal. And then over here, you get the bumper, which is exposed, but it is plastic, guys, and oh, you get this nice effect over here. Just be careful you do not uh, have your luggage uh, scratch it too often in long terms, otherwise. But it should be fine. At least it's not the body paint that's exposed. Everyone, you get an adjustable boot floor. First of all, I want to talk about the volume in the boot space. The volume is average for its price and segments, guys. In fact, it seems more spacious than what I've seen in other competitors. Now, because this Peugeot is closely related to the 208, for logic reasons, being a crossover SUV, it has more space. Now, just take a look at this beautiful uh, adjustable floor. Look at this handle right here. You get this nice little handle to hold on to. And then when moving it up, you get this boot floor that fits perfectly to the boot lip, guys. So whenever you're carrying luggages, just put it up here and uh, it should be fine. Now, guys, you do not get any 12 volt socket in the back and there's no tether point whatsoever. I Oh, you do get tether points, but they're down there, guys. Now, when you want to move uh, furniture, guys, it's quite good when you have the boot floor upwards. But if you need more volume, don't hesitate to move the boot floor down. And uh, it's it's really good, guys. I like the material it is lined with. It's um, durable material, guys. And when moving the seat back up, guys, just be careful for the seat belt. It'll be stuck right there. So you want to move the seat belt right here. So here's my conclusion of the facelift Peugeot 2008, everyone. When it comes to the style aspect of things, Peugeot has done something that could be a bit selective. Some of you will think it has diluted its identity. Some of you will think it has done massive improvements. I'm in the neutral zone. I think the headlights have seen massive improvements. They look far more qualitative than before. But then at the same time, the design of them would have made me think it's a Jeep from a distance because literally without that Peugeot badge and with this kind of uh, horizontal lighting, it does look more like a Jeep than it does for a Peugeot, but then it doesn't really matter, guys. What matters is the equipment list. The equipment list is what uh, makes things more interesting because as soon as I sat inside, I was greeted with a lot of goodies. The exterior, first of all, had nice goodies like the parking aid, the 360 degree parking camera. Then the interior has just about enough equipment to make you believe this is something that could compete in the premium segment more than in the mass market. Which leads me to the big question. For a price of 36,000 euros, is this Peugeot 2008 facelift good value for money or not? I have to say it is great value for money, guys. It's one of the best value for money crossover SUVs you can currently find. This price and segment, for those of you who desire style, this is probably one of the best pick for you. But for those of you who desire unquestionable reliability, the Toyota Yaris Cross is probably the best choice for you. And for those of you who desire quality, the Volkswagen Group competitors are the best choices for you, like the Skoda Kamek or the Volkswagen T-Cross. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos that are on the run, everyone. I will see you all next time.